So we're looking at South African crises, which are also replicated in the rest of the world. We started off with a video where we spoke about this particular slide by Carl Sagan. And then we went on to talk about setting the scene. And we spent about 10 minutes setting the scene. So if you haven't watched those two videos, please watch them. You'll find them in the playlist on this channel. And then we're going to talk about this slide, which is my vision for my city. My vision is an environmentally friendly, low cost, high quality of life, place of abundance and friendship. So some people call me a dreamer. A dreamer has a vision. Like this lady on the right hand side here. She's looking through a telescope and she's standing on a box so she can see further and she's looking for something. And maybe she has a vision. Maybe she has a vision. Maybe she can see better. So I, in my mind, I see a particular future. I start by seeing my future. And then, and I'm going to explain to you during this series how we can predict our future. And if you want me to get to it sooner than I expect, then please write in the comments that you want me to get to how we can predict the future. It's easier than you think. Of course, everything that's common sense is common sense to the person who knows it and maybe not common sense to anybody else. In fact, some people have said common sense is not very common. So my vision for my city is the same as my vision for my country, the same as my vision for my house, the same as the vision for my world. And that is an environmentally friendly, low cost, high quality of life, place of abundance and friendship. So a visionary has a vision. An entrepreneur is somebody who sees a problem and he says, okay, I can make something better. Like last week I was in a meeting with a top entrepreneur who spends a lot of time in hotels where they have those horrible conveyor belt toasters and he has just patented a different kind of toaster that works a lot quicker and he's busy working with people to make it. So they, in his case, he wanted to have a fast toaster um, because otherwise on the conveyor belt you put your bread in and then you go get your eggs and you come back and someone else has taken your toast. Um, maybe. So the entrepreneur has a vision and the vision is a dream and the dreamer has a vision and that makes you a visionary. So some people might say that Elon Musk is a visionary or they might have said that Alexander the Great is a visionary or any of our great um, prophets in the past are visionaries and they see a particular future. So my vision is <clears throat> I want it to be environmentally friendly. I want whatever we do to make the environment cleaner. So if we burn coal and it's making the environment unclean, we must do something else to make it clean. And Genesis in the Old Testament says we must replenish the earth. Go forth and multiply, in my terms, multiply ideas, go forth and multiply ideas and replenish the earth, make the earth a better place to live in. Environmentally friendly. If I extract something out of the earth, must put something back. Whatever I do, I want to make sure that it's environmentally friendly. And then I want it to be low cost. So now everybody says, but if we do renewable energy, it's so expensive compared to coal or uranium or nuclear or wind or whatever, who knows? You know, so how do we how do we get something that's environmentally friendly and low cost? Well, it's part of my vision. And then not only do I want it to be low cost, in other words, low cost for the environment and low cost to myself. So I want my cost to be going down every year. My electricity cost should go down every year. My water cost should go down every year. My food cost should go down every year. My transport cost should go down every year. Inflation should go down every year. So it's called deflation. But of course, some people don't like deflation because it means that maybe you don't need to work because maybe you've got a thousand rand in the bank. And if you don't spend it this year, it'll be worth 2000 rand next year in real terms, as opposed to with inflation, you have to work because at the end of this year, your thousand rand is worth 900 rand. And therefore you need to work to maintain your standard of living because of high inflation. So, I want it to be environmentally friendly. 
I want it to be low cost for myself and for the environment. And I want it to be high quality of life. So if I don't have any costs, I don't have to transport myself to an office building because I have my office at my house, for example. I don't sit in all that traffic and all that pollution and all those thousands of people on the train and the bus and the plane and the airports and the bus stations and the train stations and, you know, possibly 10,000 people in my building if I work for a big company. You know, so I want, because I have low cost, I have high quality of life. I also have high quality of life because of my choices. I choose to eat healthily. I choose to breathe healthily. I choose to think healthily and I choose to drink healthily. And if you look at my reasons for being, reason for existence of this particular channel on YouTube, you'll see that it says that I want to eat consciously, drink consciously, breathe con consciously and think consciously. And when I do that, I have a low cost of living, an environmentally friendly life, and I get to a high quality of life. And when I get to that, the place where I live becomes a place of abundance. There's an abundance of electricity, which is cheap and environmentally friendly, of water, which is cheap and environmentally friendly, cost going down every year, of food, cost going down every year, abundance going up, transport, if I need to transport myself, I can learn to be telepathic, so I can go anywhere without leaving my chair. And when all of that happens, I have time for friendship. I have time for social networking. I have time for socializing. I have time to take my cell phone that I spend a whole day typing messages on, you know, to people all over the world and actually phoning and saying, hi, John. And he says, hi, David. And I say, you know, John, I haven't spoken to you for six months. And he says, but you sent me a WhatsApp this morning. I said, yeah, but, you know, that's a WhatsApp or, or a Viber or a messenger or an SMS or an email. But, hey, John, you know, we haven't actually spoken verbally, even though we can talk for free on WhatsApp or Messenger or Google Meet or Zoom or MS Teams or StreamYard or whatever. We've got a hundred different ways of talking to each other for free. Or I can just phone you and I can pay for the call. But isn't that incredible that we can actually talk to each other? And you know, John, as, as we've spoken to before so many times, when you send someone an email, or you send them a WhatsApp, or you type text to them, they get 20% of the message. And if you speak to them on the phone, or you speak to them on Zoom, then maybe they get 50%. And if you speak to them face-to-face, -face, they get 100%. So we're missing out when we're not face-to-face, -face, but at least if we can see each other, because we're on a Zoom call with a video running, and not only can we hear each other and hear the inflection in our voice when I say, you know, I really don't like what you did last week. You know, if I write it, it sounds terrible. I've got to put smileys in my emails and smileys in my WhatsApp because I'm not cross to the person because I don't like what they did last week. Maybe they were just late for a meeting. Maybe, maybe they forgot to do something they said they were going to do for me. So if I speak to them, I say, hey, John, you know, you did saying I didn't like last week. He says, oh, David, what was it? And we have a, we have a decent conversation. But if he sees me and I'm saying, hey, John, you know, I'm smiling and I'm saying, you know, John, well, you know, last week you did something I didn't like. And he sees me smiling when I'm saying it. He thinks, well, what's up? Hey, Dave, what's up? And we have a conversation and we're getting much more towards having that connection. And when you're with someone physically, even if they're not speaking, you know, you get together with your best friend, you know, from school. OK, John, I'm going to say goodbye and I'm going to continue with my video. Thanks. So. Okay, that was just a make-believe call with my make-believe friend, John. But you you get together with someone that you haven't been with for years and years. Maybe someone you were at nursery school with or junior school or high school. Maybe you're 50, 60, 70 years old and you had someone at the university. You know, maybe an old girlfriend or boyfriend or someone that you spent a lot of time with. Maybe you're a member of the mountain club and you went hiking together and mountain climbing or sailing or whatever. And you have a deep friendship and bond with this person. And you haven't seen them for 20 years, but you get together and you don't say anything. You just hug and you sit together and you're so happy because there's so much goodness between you. And you can feel that energy. You can feel each other's auras. You can feel each other's vibe. You can feel that friendship. And all of that happens in an environmentally friendly, low-cost, 
high quality of life, place of abundance and friendship, which is my vision for my city, my vision for my house, my vision for my country, my vision for my continent, my vision for my hemisphere, my vision for my earth, my vision for my planet, and so on. That's where I want to be. That's where I see earth. That's where I see things being. That's where I see myself and my relationship with you. And when, for example, I don't buy a new car, my neighbors buy a new car, they go on a holiday, or they spend a lot of money on stuff, you know, then I'm saying, well, I make my own electricity, and I make it environmentally friendly, and I make it so that it's low cost. So when the price goes up, my price doesn't go up. And it gives me a low cost of living, a lower cost, and a higher quality of life. And it's abundant. I have much more electricity than I need. And I create so much friendship from it because there's so many people that find me, hi, David, or email me or WhatsApp me or send me LinkedIn's or Facebook requests or messengers and says, hey, David, wow, you've been doing this since 2004, you know, almost 20 years. How did you know about it back then? And I say, well, you know, it's quite interesting because when I was a child, my mother said I was chasing after windmills. You know, there's that guy, Don Quixote. Man of La Mancha, and uh, in Cervantes, Miguel de Cervantes' book, and he's chasing after windmills, which is this expression for chasing after something that doesn't exist in his mind because he has this huge imagination. And then my mother told me when I was five and ten that I was chasing after windmills because I had such a big imagination. And then when I got to 40 years old in 2004, I was chasing after real windmills, which were called wind turbines. And they were making electricity from the wind. And how wonderful that was. We came full circle, pun intended. And I had a big fan because the wind turbine was turning. So there we go. My vision for my city is an environmentally friendly, low cost, high quality of life place of abundance and friendship. And I wish you abundance. I wish you friendship. I wish you a high quality of life. I wish you a low cost of living for yourself and the environment. And I wish you to be friendly, friendly, friendly with your environment, with everything you have, with your cell phone, because you know that it's environmentally friendly, made by an environmentally friendly company that care about the planet on recycling stuff. They're buying back secondhand goods when they sell you a new good. So you go and buy yourself a new computer and you take the old computer and they give you money for it because they can recycle it. And even if even if, it's that, even if it's difficult and they've got to put it in a warehouse for now until they can recycle it properly, you know that it's going to get done and they're going to take those parts out and it's good for them and it's good for you because it means that you buy the same equipment again. So there you go. Be a visionary. Have a purpose. Have a mission. Have a vision. And see where it takes you. Amen.